we have looked into finite difference method quite extensively in the previous modules. The method itself is discussed from the point of view of various problems whether it is advection equation or heat diffusion equation. So we have covered pretty much finite difference for various practical problems also for the problems that we are mostly interested the Maxwell equations. But that being said we cannot still go forward and implement any practical problems before we discuss the domain truncation because the idea of domain truncation is a integral part of any method. So we are going to be discussing about boundary conditions in this module. So this is going to be of very much importance for any method uh, since we have covered finite difference method just recently in the previous modules we are going to set the right tone for boundary conditions using finite difference method but we will also give certain pointers for extension to other methods while we discuss the advanced methods or alternative methods like finite volume in the later stage of the modules uh, we will revisit the boundary conditions once again but let us start into the boundary conditions in this module and look what are the going to be the contents of this module. So we will start with boundary conditions introduction and we will discuss about various aspects of the boundary conditions and we will see certain types of absorbing boundary conditions that we are going to be interested and we are going to see some examples for modeling uh, practical electromagnetic problems in this particular exercise. So let us start with the introduction. So one of the biggest challenges that we face when we artificially truncate domain is numerical reflection. The reason we are calling it as numerical reflection because they are artificial reflection. There is no reflection in the physical space or the physical problem itself but we are trying to model it in finite space and time we are going to get reflections and which we call it as numerical reflection. The challenge for a domain truncation is to make this numerical reflection as little as possible ideally there should be no reflection and also we wanted to simulate an infinite computational space using finite spatial domain. This goes actually without saying that whatever we call it as finite should be small enough so that the computational effort that we are going to put in is going to be as small as possible. Without doing this we are going to expand the computational domain quite big for a problem where our real interest area is going to be very small. So we make the boundary conditions perfect in that sense uh, we can make them as close as possible to the domain of interest so that our finite space will be as limited as possible. As we will see we, there is no perfect boundary condition we have to come with certain conditions that we have to accept as the limitations for practical implementation. So this could be the fact that we will see during the course of this module. So let us look at the type of boundary conditions that we are going to look in this module. So the types of boundary conditions are of three main categories. We call them as bulk interface boundary condition, special interface boundary condition and ABC which is the absorbing boundary condition and uh, the special interface boundary conditions are going to be of two types for electromagnetic problems we call them as PEC perfect electric conductor and PMC which is a perfect magnetic con conductor. And in the case of absorbing boundary condition there are going to be two broad categories one is the absorbing boundary condition itself and the other one is going to be a layer which is called as a perfectly matched layer. Obviously it is a misnomer to call a PML as an ABC because a PML is going to be a layer not just a particular boundary as in the case of silver Muller absorbing boundary condition. SMABC is silver Muller absorbing boundary condition and EMABC is Enquist Machta absorbing boundary condition. These are two widely used absorbing boundary conditions which we will discuss also during the course of this module. So let us look into the interface boundary condition from two different aspect one is from the aspect of bulk and the other aspect of the boundary itself. So let us start looking at this particular problem assume that this is a waveguide so let me draw it here on the paper so that you get a sense of what we are talking about. 
So we have a waveguide. and we are trying to model this particular cross section of the waveguide. So we are trying to take this particular cross section which is nothing but this area and obviously this part are going to be the metal and this is going to be the free space where we are going to feed in certain mode. And what we are trying to do here is we are going to discretize this problem. So now we have converted this 3D problem to a 2D problem where we are seeing only one cross section of this waveguide and of course this waveguide is going to be in a computational domain and we have to discretize this waveguide. So let us say we are discretizing this waveguide using some triangles and that is what we have done in this slide. So there are going to be four triangles inside this cross section as you can see if the waveguide has different materials instead of free space where all the epsilon and mu is going to be epsilon naught and mu naught. In this case this waveguide has 1, 2, 3, 4 different types of material. Obviously it is a hypothetical case just to show the extreme cases what we are going to confront. So we have made it like this. So you have 4 different material constituents and the waveguides cross section is going to be like this what are the different interfaces that are going to be involved in this particular problem is what we are going to look into now. So what we have seen here is the red color line which is talking about certain interfaces. So what we have as interface is the interface between two dielectric medium. So medium number 1 and medium number 2 and the interface between medium number 2 and medium number 3 and the interface between medium number 3 and medium number 4. So what we are going to see is once you are discretizing this particular problem using finite difference method. So let us take this particular problem. We have 4 different materials 1, 2, 3 and 4. So now I am going to discretize this domain using finite difference method. So when I do the finite difference method as in the case before I will have the x oriented grid and I will have the y oriented grid. So on and so forth. We have already seen in the case of the introduction of the finite difference method we said there are going to be certain staircasing error. So we see that these are the staircasing error that are going to come while we are modeling because this particular cell is partly in material 1 and partly in material 2. Similarly this particular cell is partly in material 2 and partly in material 3 so on and so forth. So that is not the most important thing that we are worried about. Let us say we have an exact layer where one rectangle is going to be in material 1 and the other rectangle is going to be in material 2 which is not the case here because we are having a kind of a geometry where the discontinuity is not aligned to the grid size itself. So let us take an example where our geometry itself is going to be aligned with the grid so that we will not have the staircasing error. So what we are interested is we have a particular geometry and assume that this is a cell and this is another cell and one cell is in epsilon mu and the other cell is also in epsilon mu if it is going to be a homogeneous medium. It is going to be different if it is an inhomogeneous medium where one will be epsilon 1 mu 1 and the other one will be epsilon 2 mu 2. Assuming now for the simple case both the mediums are the same medium. So we have one cell that is having parameters computed at the cell center and the face center. And then the other one has also similarly cell center and face center. So the values that I am computing in the cell center I am marking them as plus and the value that I am computing at the face center I am marking them with certain different color. So let us say I am marking them with red and let me make it a little bit different so I will color it 
will make a cross and a plus. So what is going to be the case is in the case of finite difference we have a staggered E and H. So E is going to be let us say at this point and H is going to be at the face center. So similarly we can see how the different cells are going to be oriented but there might be methods where both E and H will be in the same point. So in that case both E and H are going to be at the same point. So we have to compute the value of E and H using the values at the cell center and extrapolating to the phase center. So you will see this will be the case in the method of finite volumes which we will discuss at the later point or the method of finite elements which we will also discuss at the later point. So here we are going to see the interface as follows. The first interface condition that we are going to look into is the tangential continuity of the fields. So assuming that these are two cells with the same permittivity and permeability we are going to have the tangential continuity satisfied according to this particular equation. So the tangential component of the E field and H field so in this case the left hand side and the right hand side are going to be same. So this is the first interface condition that we have. So in the case of special interface conditions we have to satisfy certain other conditions. For example, when you see that this particular layer, the layer on the top, which is a metal layer in the case of a waveguide, when we are modeling them for simplicity, we can assume that this particular layer is going to be a perfect electric conductor. If it is a perfect electric conductor, we know that the tangential component of the electric field will become equal to 0, and that is what we are seeing here when it is a PEC which is a special interface condition we put the tangential component of the electric field equal to 0 whereas the tangential component of the magnetic field have to be computed and we will use this particular equation. If it is staggered grid you have to adapt this particular equation according to the formulation of the method if it is non staggered grid where in the case of other methods like finite element and finite volume you can directly use this particular formulation the minus sign and the plus sign are only written for you to know whether it is going to be a left neighbor or the right neighbor. So we have set here in this particular example all the boundary edges will have the right neighbor the left neighbor will not be there we will only have the right neighbor. So in this case for this particular edge the right neighbor is this one for this edge we have to compute the right neighbor as this one so on and so forth. So let us look at the perfect magnetic conductor counterpart in the perfect electric conductor we have put the tangential component of E field as 0 whereas in the perfect magnetic conductor you have to put the tangential component of H field as 0 and you compute the tangential component of electric field using the equation which we have given here. What we also see that is this particular condition when we combine both the perfect magnetic conductor equation and the perfect electric conductor equation such that the fluxes are computed for both the tangential component of electric field and magnetic field we end up in the simple first order accurate silver Muller boundary condition that is what we have seen here. We will not be using the silver Muller boundary condition in the case of the finite difference simulation that we are going to show later in this part of this module just for you to know the silver Muller boundary condition is expressed by this equation we will revisit the silver Muller boundary condition when we talk about the method of finite volumes which is an alternative method for now it is enough for you to know that there is a boundary condition called as a silver Muller boundary condition we will see this at the later stage. So that being said let us go into the special class of boundary condition we have looked into three categories of boundary conditions in that specific case we have specially looked into the bulk interface boundary condition where we talked about the tangential continuity conditions and we have looked into the special interface conditions which are the perfect electric and the perfect magnetic conductor what is missing is the absorbing boundary condition itself now we are going to look into the absorbing boundary condition. There are different classes of absorbing boundary condition as we have 
introduced in the introduction slide. So we are interested in two categories the first one is the pure ABC in that category we have already introduced the silver Miller absorbing boundary condition but we will also see a special kind of absorbing boundary condition which is the Engvist Machta boundary condition. We will derive the equation for Engvist Machta boundary condition now. So we are going to also introduce a very important boundary condition which is as I said in the part of the introduction wrong to call it as a boundary condition rather we should call it as boundary layer which is called as the perfectly matched layer. We will see that in more detail in this lecture series as well at later stage but we will introduce the perfectly matched layer for finite difference problem now and also extend it for other methods later on. So let us start with the simple one dimensional absorbing boundary condition assume that you have a one dimensional unbounded computational space which we assume that it is in x axis so we say it is looking like this and what we are interested is to model this one dimensional unbounded space using finite one dimensional space. So what we are going to do now is we are going to truncate this one dimensional unbounded space into a finite one dimensional space. So here the simulation space is from A to B and our goal is to make it simulate as if the space is unbounded. In other words what we are doing is what we want is we do not want any reflection to come while we truncate the space. So the ideal space is a larger space but when we truncate we do not want any reflection that is going to come. What I mean by reflection is assume that there is a wave that is going from here to here and what happens when it reaches B is it gets reflected back. So a wave that is going goes like this and gets reflected back because there is a truncation here it sees a kind of an end here. But the goal is to make it look as if that there is no reflection and this layer does not exist it is going to be replicated as if it is infinite in space. In other words what we want is the wave that is going here should not see this B existing should travel as if it is travelling in an infinite unbounded space that is the goal of this particular challenge. So what we are doing now is we are replacing this actual domain by a finite space. So the finite space is going to be A comma B and the idea is to make sure that the reflection is going to be 0 at this point A and B. So consider that X is equal to B and now what we are doing is we are assuming that the wave is propagating in the plus X direction. So once we know that the wave is propagating in the plus X direction we can give the analytical value of the solution. So let us say we are interested in computing the value of EZ and it is propagating along the value of X and we are saying that it has certain magnitude E0 and it is going to have a kind of dependence on the K using this equation and this is the analytical value E0 is the amplitude and E power minus J KX is going to be the spatial dependence. So what is going to happen is when the wave is propagating we have certain truncation that is going to happen and what we are interested is to compute the truncation error in the form of the reflection that we are going to see at the boundary A and B. So let us assume that K is equal to omega by C which is going to be the wave number and now we are able to substitute the value of K into that value of EZX and that is what we are going to do here and we are going to differentiate that. So what we are going to do is we are substituting the value of k which is omega by c. So Ez of x equal to E0 E power minus j omega by c x and now I am going to differentiate Ez 
with respect to x this is a partial differentiation so what I have get is I will get minus j omega by c and I will get e naught and then I will get the same equation by x and this particular term is already e z of x so I can write minus j omega by c e z of x. So this is going to be the value of the partial differentiation of e z with respect to x. Now what we are doing is we are substituting the value for minus j omega as dt and writing this particular expression in the form of the time differentiation which we have done here. So once we have done we can see what happens when we apply at the point x equal to b we allow the wave to pass we apply this condition at x equal to b that is what we are going to do. So once we do that we are able to compute the value of the reflection that is going to come at the point x equal to b in the case of the one dimensional problem the reflection will be 0 because it will always be a normal incidence. So this is a very specific case because we do not have a one dimensional case in a three dimensional problem because we have wave propagating pretty much in all direction. So we cannot have the same perfect absorbing boundary condition like in the case of the one dimensional problem we have seen. So what we will do now is in the next part of this module we will see how we can extend this analysis for a two dimensional case. So we will stop here we will come in the next module and see how this absorbing boundary condition can be extended for a two dimensional case. So we will look back in the next module until then goodbye.